Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at uh, installing an FPV system on the Phantom 2. Now, uh, as I talked about in the unboxing and general discussion session a while back, I got this to be kind of my new workhorse to kind of mess around with. So one of the things I did is I went off and I designed a set of brackets. Now, I actually borrowed this from Thingiverse, a designer, I, I forget the name up. I put it up in the corner. Uh, designed this base bracket. Now what I did is I extended this bracket uh, like this to receive the transmitter. So the transmitter will mount on the back here. Also what I like about it is it has these standoffs. Now I added these two standoffs to match these because the idea is this will mount in the gimbal. And I like this because the designer had already designed in a bunch of different hole configurations for uh, different pieces. So Again, big positive. There did seem to be a little bit of problems with this model not being watertight, so I don't know if it's going to translate through to this piece or not, because I, I will put this up on uh, Thingiverse also, but I did get it to print out, and the idea is, is I'm going to use some uh, vibration grommets uh, between the two to mount this on top of here. Now, one of the things, I'm always a little bit apprehensive use, using 3D printed components. Um, in copters, uh, especially where they're going to bear some weight, and a lot of it is due to vibration. So one of the pieces, you probably notice that this is a bit shiny, so what I do is, after I print this out, I paint it with epoxy, uh, typically five minute epoxy, and then it tightens right up. And what happens is it makes this far more solid and less likely to come apart due to vibration, because this, this is gonna take some vibration. Now, what I also did on the back piece here, is added these two standoffs because what I'm going to do is drill a couple small holes and then what I'm going to use is some um, some number four uh, about quarter inch hole uh, sorry holes <laughs> screws to tap right into the frame of this uh, and the idea behind this is is this is going to become the base frame and then what will happen is I'll print out multiples of these and use these as the base to mount on here and I'll just swap them off for the different camera. Now I'm going to use the, the my Foxier uh, camera. I did a um, review on this a while ago, and so this is what's going to set up and be the main camera at least for now on this. Now I'll be able to swap this plate out, take the Foxier off, and then say add the Run Cam to my 3D cam, and then what happens is the transmitter will sit on the back here. So, in short, what I'll use is some number three screws, and I do suggest using, at least on, on like two of the screws, some blue Loctite, if you will, uh, to make sure that it sits in here. And it'll line up with these holes for the gimbal, and then what I'll do is I will take um, and drill some small holes in here uh, to receive the number four screws over there. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up, and then after I do, we'll come back and take a look at how it all came together. Okay, so here we are back. Um, so I've mounted this. Now, one of the things, maybe you want to put these on first or not. Um, I can still get to them pretty easy to pop them in. Um, but, I, I, again, I kind of wanted to show this coming together, so that's why I didn't put these on first. So here it is, all assembled. I used uh, four of these. And what are they? Let me share with you guys. So these are about 10 millimeter uh, M3s. And I used uh, lock washers under each of them to hold it tight. And then I used two quarter inch number fours, which I drilled a small hole. Now these just barely pass through the body. Now you could probably mount this without um, doing this, but I didn't want this flapping because one of the things that's going to happen is I'm going to use this mushroom antenna on the back. And it's going to, this is going to mount like this. And what I didn't want this to do is the air pulling it and flapping this back piece and, and potentially breaking it. So these two here, it's definitely very secure. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and mount up the uh, rubber pieces and add this piece in and mount the camera. And then we'll come back and take a look at that. Okay, so we have this mounted up. We got the... Uh, the black vibration mounts in there. We used just the, the string technique to pull those through and we got this uh, set up. So what we're going to do now is mount the transmitter. Now to do that, one of the things that this generates quite a bit of heat. So uh, that's why I was a little bit nervous with this and this is also the reason I pinned these back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this double-sided tape 
stick it on the bottom here provide some insulation and separation and then use zip strips to these holes to cinch it down so i'm gonna go ahead and do that then we'll come back and take a look so here we are we pretty much have everything assembled there's what it looks like so we've got the uh, fox ear cam I, I gotta put the two screws in the sides here yet uh, however before i do that i need to program it uh, and then because it has the osd in it as well as um, kind of clean up some of these connectors because we got an audio and a voltage reference connector here now since i've tied this in directly into the battery inside of here i don't have to worry about the voltage reference connector um, so everything's set up. It is hitting on this uh, M3 a little bit, so I may have to change that. I'm not sure if that's a, a adequate angle or not. I may give it a few flight tests. Now, part of what I've done here is um, I've moved this camera all the way to the forward because one of the things I want to see here is, let me try this. So what I got here is my GoPro knockoff. And now one of the things it's a little bit close to this to, to mount here on the center but what I'm thinking about doing is redesigning this piece here a little bit to bring it out forward so I can mount the Foxy Air camera on there and then utilize the mounts here because as you see I can um, uh, get the uh, GoPro down here now it's it stands a little bit you know proud of the uh, landing gear but I can either do extended landing gear or just kind of um, you know deal with it a little bit I could also work this up to move it a little bit closer now because the other piece I'm doing is I'm thinking about is um, I'll bring it out I'll bring this out and I'll actually put the Fox here on top and so I can have totally uh, clear access for a GoPro camera underneath to mount directly to this mounting bracket. And what I may do is actually even 3D print into the design a GoPro mount right onto the bracket. And again, flip, flip the Fox Air camera onto the top. I'm going to experiment with it in this configuration right now just to see how it works and everything. And kind of, uh, you know, see how everything handles because, again... We can simply make sure I get the battery going in the right way. You know, pop the battery in. I can still get to the battery. And then I power it up. And you see I'm on channel 42. And if I were to get this. And you see I've got the monitor. We have a picture. You're kind of looking at yourself, looking at me. My hat on backwards so I don't hit the uh, mic stand. But again, you can see the see it all works. And again, I have this mushroom antenna. So this is a six, I believe, a 600 milliwatt transmitter. And again, this guy gets a little bit warm. And I got the uh, mushroom antenna. So I'm hoping that I get some pretty good gain. I need to set this down for a minute. Uh, and the other thing is, notice one of the, the pieces, so it has the battery voltage on here. Now I still have to set, uh, program the OSD in here. The one thing I really don't understand is why they don't have a compass in here. It seems that it would be relatively easy to build in a compass into this. Now, and again, it would just simply show you the direction you're flying. So the idea is, is to return back, all you do is if you fly north, then you know if you want to return, you fly south. It, it's rather simple. I don't understand why they don't build something like that into the OSD. That would be a huge benefit, uh, I think. So uh, I'm going to turn that off. So anyways, this is uh, this is the setup that we're going to initially use. And the idea is, is I want to build this so um, I can put various payloads on here and fly the various payloads. And I have FPV. Um, separate of any tablet or any other complexity, if you will. And then I can also record it on the fly or sky flyer, whatever the heck that thing's called, uh, too. So it's kind of an interesting combo. And then I can put whatever camera I want down here. Um, because I am going to come up with a couple different camera mounts, especially for some larger cameras. Um, I intended on doing some of this on the S500, and I probably still will. It's just, you know, the time to program it and wire it and solder it, and just I just haven't had time. You know, this was pretty quick. I just whipped this up in Tinkercad, printed it out, put some epoxy on it, and here you go. And, you know, the, the, the uh, Phantom is basically all ready to fly. So that's kind of what it looks like. So anyways, um, 
Hey, subscribe button's going to be coming up over there. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, subscribe. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Maybe what you had for lunch or what you're going to have for lunch. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.